Hi everybody, I'm here with Scott and Joe from New Camp and I'm excited because I'm going to show you the prototype. This is a prototype, right Scott? Exactly. Yep. So this is not a final product. We want to say that right up front, but we want to give you a quick preview and they've allowed us to do that. Thank you so much. To show you some of the new things that are coming your way on the tab. For those of you who don't know, this is Joe Mullet, and you are the beginnings of New Camp, right? Correct. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it started with a vision in 2004, and then the tab, we started building this tab in 2011. And of course, this new one has been in the making for two years, trying to figure out what we can do better, especially the trim. And the interior gives you a fresh new look and it just came out beautiful. I'm really excited about it, and thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope you enjoy the product when you see it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it is a little different than what you originally have been building. The tab came out in, what, 2004? Yes. And uh, you started building in 11? Yes. And it hasn't changed much, has it? No, it basically is the same. The trim has been the same for all these years, especially the trim. And so we wanted to give it a much better look and a better product. And I think it will be performing so much better than what it did before. Cool. Well, it certainly looks uh, fresh. It looks updated. So I'm excited to get to show you. Joe, I know you need to leave, but thanks for joining us. Thanks for saying hello. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. All right. So Scott, um, Scott Hubble, who most of you probably know if you've been around TABS, um, Scott, what is your official position at New Camp? I serve as the CEO. All right, so we've got the CEO showing us around the prototype. Very cool. Thanks, Scott. I know the camera's not your favorite thing, but I appreciate you jumping in because we really think this is cool and we want to show it off. So tell me where you want to start. Let's go ahead and start on the outside. Okay. Uh, where there are three major things that uh, we're looking at. Um, the first would be underneath, which is just the chassis. Um, we're going to lengthen it just a tad and move the spare tire up underneath the tub. So now it's a lot easier access, just like our other models, so that'll fall in line. Previously, it had been sitting behind the axle, which was a little cumbersome. Right. So the next thing is up front here with our LP tub. Mm -hmm. And what we've done here is we've uh, changed the, the angles a little bit of it and expanded it both in terms of depth and width. So now you can have double LP, you get a double battery, you have plenty of storage for your hoses, for your crank or whatnot. So it's just a, uh, a nicer, bigger tub. It is not going to be an ABS trim to match your trim kit anymore. It's going to be diamond plate, 100% across the board. So this is the tub that all tabs will receive. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether it's a boondock package or a standard tab. It will have the same tub. They will all be outfitted exactly the same, right? That's correct. And this, uh, this is a much more sturdy tub. Um, it's good for, in terms of integrity, it's going to you know, last a lot longer than a typical ABS tub. And give you a little more storage. I love that. Yeah, it's a win-win. Yes. So, um, you know, the next thing that we're looking at, and it's really the major component would be the new uh, trim kit that we've gone with. So there's a couple uh, pieces here. The first piece that you're gonna see is the extrusion and keter rail. Now this is a one piece extrusion. Typically what we're doing right now is we have a standard extrusion underneath this plastic trim kit and then a separate keter rail for tents and awnings and whatnot. Um, we have now a one piece rail that this new kit actually will help clip into. So it, it functions as one and it's held in then with glue and then some screws that you cannot see. So one of the great things about this new trim kit is that 
it offers a really rich aesthetic and you don't see any type of screws or any of that. Um, it's fewer pieces. The pieces are actually mirrored from side to side. So there's less pieces as a, a dealer to order in the event of a repair. We have had some cracking issues um, in, you know, due to the fit or with you know, screw placement and whatnot. And those will be alleviated as well with this new design. So we're really excited about that. That's great. And I love the clean look from the side. It looks very different, but looks really modern. It really is modern. We, we want to keep, you know, the iconic look of the tab, but we realized, hey, we need to freshen things up just a little bit. So I think you're really going to see that when you're looking at it head on and at the rear. So one of the things um, with the trim kit that we did, in addition to the form of it, is actually change up some of the colors as well. So, you know, black is one of the most popular colors. That's a, that's a staple that's gonna stay. White is gonna stay. And then we've taken the silver metallic fleck color and replaced it with this uh, really cool steel gray. And we had a royal blue. We're shifting that more towards a, more of a navy blue. And then candy apple red was shipped more to more like a blood red. So we're, we're excited. Those are the colors that are actually like the top five selling colors of car vehicles today. So it'd be like a nice extra benefit for the, the vehicle purchaser. Okay, well I have to say, I would have to see those colors to actually be able to vision it. But I love this steel gray. So I, I bet the others look just as good. Yeah, they really do. But again, you'll have to see it uh, I will. to really resonate with you. Um, so another thing that we've got going on is you'll see that part of the trim kit that used to exist would be framing the window. Okay. And that no longer is going to be part of the kit. And what we've done instead of that is offer a couple of graphic options. Now they're not finalized yet, but what you're seeing here is a landscape concept. Um, and you've got mountains, trees, on the other side you've got elk and eagles and so we're going to do something fun and unique and different just to sort of nice fill out the space but you'll have a couple options there. And maybe just a standard stripe or a solid color for somebody who wants something less uh, interesting? Absolutely, yeah, you know, again, the iconic nature of the tab is that it's typically just silver and blue, white and red, black and silver, and you're still going to have those options just be, you know, very, you know, standard monotone or whatever you want to do with it. Well, customizing is one of the things that I think people have loved to do on the tab. So I bet you could even get it with no graphics at all and do your own thing, right? Certainly you can. And, okay. and of course, Am I just adding something in there that you weren't planning on doing? Because I, I think that will be something people may want to do once you start offering unique graphics. Yeah, and actually, if you look at the 400 product, we offer a couple different graphic options, but quite often we send it out without any graphics at all or just one single small stripe. So we're willing to, you know, send it out sort of like a blank canvas for the client to use. Oh, love it. I love that part. Uh, maybe this is a good time to apologize for the awkward mic thing, but we're kind of on the fly. We're in a field here at Open House, uh, and it's kind of tough to work with what we've got, but we're going to make it work so you can see this trailer. All right, well, let's keep going. Okay, so there's just a couple last small elements on the outside. Okay. Um, one is that we're going to add an LP Quick Connect. You want to hold this? Will that be better? Sure. There you go. Yeah, we're going to add an LP Quick Connect, and we're going to tuck it in underneath, uh, back in, under the angle of the trailer. And then also we're going to drop a uh, external speaker here, so when you're out underneath the awning, the tent, just enjoying the campground or wherever you're at, uh, you can go ahead and pump the music out or just whatever it is to relax. Uh, but let's take a look at this, uh, the back end here. Okay, let's go. So it's still traditional in shape, um, but you'll see some of it mimics that of what we did with the 400. Um, it's very European, very modern, high gloss. Um, and you know what, there's actually one other thing I did not mention, and that is, the handles. So we've gone with these real robust grab handles. Um, it's, a, it's a more refined look with the kit in general, but you know, the beauty of the tab is that you can move it around, um, unlike a lot of trailers. Um, but we're going to give you some nice, big, thick grab handles to do that with. Cool. All right. I don't know so do we need to head inside or is there more to see on the outside? 
Yeah, I mean, you can go ahead and look at this driver's side. We've just got an external baggage door um, for some access. Some of the typical things here, your Aldi ex exhaust, um, your external shower. And then uh, there's a little hint towards the front end about one of the things that we're looking at, but we'll cover that on the inside. Okay. All right, well, let's head inside then. So the inside of this looks so different, Scott. I love it, it's very clean, very modern, and I know the appliances have changed. This kitchen is just super. So tell me about the kitchen, let's start there. Yeah, we're real excited about this front end here. Um, up top, we went ahead and uh, replaced those very small overhead cabinets that we had. Um, with a shelf with a nice lip. So you still have the ability to store things, but we lifted it up and offered you um, more, more- um, Headspace. Yeah, exactly. Headspace. As you're trying to operate up there with your kitchen. Um, in terms of the sink, um, what we've done is we've replaced the, the, the ABS sink that we've had, and we're gonna put in a stainless steel sink. What you see there is not exactly the sink that we're gonna be using, but it is the concept. The same thing with the faucet. Um, it's actually going to be a much nicer faucet and it's going to be positioned in a way to um, just maximize usage there for you. With respect to the, the stove, we're still going to be maintaining a glass top stove. The one here actually has the cast iron and um, we're, not, we're not set on the cast iron finish here, um, but we are set on the fact that we want to have a glass top stove so you still have the counter space to work with. Um, the key difference and the key upgrade is that it has an automatic igniter. So previously, you've always had to strike a match. Those days will be done. That's so, good. Yeah. Um, right. Then the last major um, appliance here. Yeah. Okay. I got you here. Oh, no, okay. you're pushing one way, I'm pushing the other. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we've put some outlets here. They used to actually be up underneath, which were a little unhandy, but we've moved that down here. So you've got your USB 12 volt and then your 110. And directly below that is a new fridge. So this fridge is something that we've put into a couple other units. It's by Isotherm. It's 2.3 cubic feet, which is an upgrade from the 1.7 that would come standard. And this is a 12 volt fridge. This is widely used right now in the marine industry. And uh, the beauty of this fridge is that it only draws two and a half amp hours. So very low usage, but high in terms of the ability to store food. So obviously the look is a home run for us as well. Um, so we're really excited about the isotherm fridge. So this fridge is really different, Scott, and some people are afraid of it. The compressor driven fridge is very different from the 12 volt fridges that we're used to in campers um, because it uses so little of your battery power. Uh, I love the fact that these refrigerators cool down in about a couple hours and they're completely cool. Uh, it doesn't take much to recharge a battery with a solar panel or even plugged in and, and keep up with this refrigerator. And because they're so efficient, that's the great thing about them. So I know people are a little afraid of the 12 volt fridges sometimes, but they're, they're actually very cool. <laughs> yeah, no pun intended. They are right. very cool, but that's, you know, I really think it's, a, it's one of those things where it's an education thing. Um, right. and, and some of the technological advances that um, the fridge industry, frankly, has made um, have been fantastic. And that's why it's a switch that uh, we're excited about. Yeah, and that's why it can go up in size is because you don't need all those cool coils in the back. So you get a bigger refrigerator. Uh, and, you know, that's something that's really nice to have in a trailer this size is a bigger refrigerator. So I like this fridge. Now, you also had told me that this is the prototype and you've decided you're going to bring this lip out just a little bit more so it covers these plugs. Is that right? Um, yeah, we'll see where exactly that's going to, to rest, but it, it will come out a little bit more. Obviously, this jets out as well, but to offer a little bit of a, a, a better flowing working space in terms of, you know, overflow or whatnot, um, yeah, this is still a work in progress. 
Right. And we keep saying that because it's important for people to know that this is a prototype. So we're trying to show you what they're what they're working with and what they're trying. Okay. So let's look at the storage real quick. Yeah. New so handles. new handles. Um, pretty cool looking things right there. Um, push yeah. Just push a button and pull it out and you got that grab. So what you've seen there, we typically stacked two cabinet doors um, and now we've just got a, a real large storage single storage area with a pull-out drawer below um, it's not 100 percent finalized that this is the exact approach that we're going with again prototype um, but we're throwing out a couple different options and then at the very bottom we have two one drawer one access door um, so there's your drawer. We currently offer this right now in the 320. So we'll continue to do so here. It's a uh, nice, easy access, especially from where I'm standing. Um, and again, underneath there, we'll, we're still looking at um, sort of rearranging and finding the, the best use of space underneath the sink. Okay. Well, let's move over here because the bathroom is one of the biggest departures, and I think of it just like the refrigerator. If you are camping at a campsite, um, the refrigerator and the toilet give you different options, but if you're one of the people who wants to camp off the grid, if you're a boondocker, both of these are great upgrades for that. Um, because your 12 volt fridge is going to stay cold you're going to be able to work with that for a very long time whereas the other 12 volt took so much battery power it was very difficult to boondock and keep your battery charged won't be the case with this refrigerator and the cassette toilet that's in here is the same thing it's a different uh, way of working with a toilet system and i'm going to jump ahead for you here only because uh, I'm the, our mic situation is kind of weird and I'm gonna it's hard to go back and forth but cassette toilets are so nice because you can actually uh, just pull the suitcase out and take it to you know a camps uh, campsite toilet or uh, even a porta potty just dump it in just like you would dump a mop bucket and the toilet flushes everything's gone it slides back in there's no uh, opening and closing. It opens and closes as you slide it back into place. We'll try to get a few shots of that to put at the end. Um, but it gives you so much bigger bathroom space. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, before we open the door for the big reveal, just kidding, um, I do want to point out this door. So our traditional door right now that we're rolling with is a glass door. And we've moved to a uh, more sturdy, solid door. That's something that we had had received um, a good deal of feedback from our consumers. Um, but nice handle, just the function of this door, it's, uh, it's really great in comparison to where we're at right now. You don't have to close all the windows to go in the bathroom, okay? Simple fact. Uh, when you've got a clear door, a see-through door, you've got to go around and close all your windows, uh, pull the shades down. This way, a lot more privacy, very easy to, to just walk in, shut the door, don't have to change any of your setup, don't have to plan it, don't have to deal with anything. So it's a cool feature. See-through doors are great. They make it feel bigger, um, they look nice, but not as practical. So they went with a practical route. Okay, that kind of explained it, right? Yeah, you get your privacy issue, but you also have sort of an aesthetic issue. Um, and that's, we like to, you know, always have aesthetic in mind with any decision we make. So Good. it was just a more of a look that we wanted to go with as well. But okay. uh, while answering that okay. Good. challenge. So anyhow, as you go in, um, you can go and see in comparison how much the larger the space has become. Um, the toilet itself, you know, is, is a very um, large and accommodating uh, appliance there um, as opposed to just the, the sit, sitting stool. So it's still going to have all the function that it did before. It is a wet bath, but um, you know, the key option there is subbing out 
the toilet and also inserting a sink that we custom designed on top of it. Um, that was one thing that was asked for um, on and off for a number of years. Uh, we did take a couple of swings at it in the years past with a corner mounted sink. Uh, it would never prove to be all that functional, um, but we trust that uh, this sink here, which is about seven inches deep, I believe, um, can serve the purpose for at least uh, some small hand washing. And I asked where the shower was, so I'm going to step in and show you where the shower is. I think it's such an efficient use of space. The faucet for your sink is actually your shower head as well, so it can be a handheld or there is a hook over on the far side of the wall that you can hook it on. So just another great use of a very limited space. Yeah, that's sort of what we specialize in, a lot of smart things in small places. So, you know, it's people like you and consumers out there that uh, give us great ideas and, and what to look at next. So speaking at looking at things next, um, you know, you notice the, uh, the redesigned cabinetry. Um, that's going to be available here in the gray or also a tan. And that's sort of what we've always been known for, just sort of that, that rich birch wood um, we use in all of our units. Um, so this, this one here, um, you know, obviously is a, is a veneer, um, but it's still real wood. And that's something we're never going to depart from. We like to hang our hat on our cabinetry, our quality, and of course, the design of what we do. So in terms of appliances, the last appliance is not sitting in the kitchen area. It's sitting actually where the old AC unit used to be. And now we've got the option to put a small microwave in here. And will that be an option? Yes, it will be an option. You do not have to take the microwave um, because there are consumers that prefer not. But uh, it's something that a lot of people have been asking for. We found the right one and now it's in the right space. Um, and then right behind it, we've relocated uh, the control to the entertainment center um, amid some, some cubby storage as well. So you're still going to have good degrees of storage, but now you're getting a whole array of new appliances. Awesome. And if we don't have the microwave, is it a cabinet? Yes, it is a cabinet door. Um, obviously, what's behind the microwave is going to be static, so it still needs to have that, you know, consistent structural support and feel within the cabin. Ah, so if I have one that didn't have a microwave, I could take the door off and retrofit the microwave in it, right? That is correct. Awesome. All right, the same standard television below it. Underneath looks the same, except for if it's got this white paneling on it. So the seating here has changed, and it used to be that you pulled slats out from the cabinet door here and put them across and then moved your cushions over. But now uh, it's a little bit different and it's all built in, right? Yeah, exactly. So we wanted to do a couple different things, and as you're pulling it out, um, you can see here that both sides, you just pull this out, they'll meet about halfway. Um, and you'll form, you'll be able to form your bed just by the same way as you always have, pulling the cushion out and letting it, you know, drop into your bed. Now, the unique thing here that we've got going on is that we now have the ability to have one side set up and the other side to stay in seating. So you have the option to have somebody still continue to rest and, you know, or if you have an animal or you just place storage on one side. Um, something that, as you know, a lot of people are asking for split seats in the back. And so we've also offered like a, spit, a split expandable bed feature as well. That's very cool. So if you lay that all the way down, you've got a bed here and then you've got seating all the way on the other side. Or you could do it, yeah, it's kind of an awkward angle there. Now this table, you guys were telling me that this table could actually come out completely, or you could leave it in here and leave one bed down just like we did. So you don't have to take the table down to make one side a bed. I thought that was a really nice feature. Yeah, that was the goal here, just being able to have, you know, one, si one half of the bed being set up instead of, you know, everything being set up. Because obviously the bed is your dinette, your dinette is your bed, 
and it's two thirds of your entire cabin. So when it's a bed, people feel like there's not much else that they can do. So this offers them the option to you know, have several functions at the same time going on. Um, I do wanna point out in the back, we do have um, some new cabinet design and it's not just uh, design but also function. So there's this nifty little release back here and um, inside features, you know, some, some deep storage on both sides. But these hinges are the soft close. Oh, Just close cool. right there. Yeah, I can watch that all day. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Scott, so I'm in Texas. Where's the AC? Very important in Texas. The AC is actually right underneath this seat. And uh, we've placed it there. That way we can actually make some room for the microwave. Now we did put it there before the microwave has come into existence. So right now in the 2020 models, the, where the microwave is just the cabinet. But the AC is gonna remain down here on the floor. And that does a couple things. Obviously it allows for central AC to, to sort of complement with your central heat and hot water system, the Aldi system. Um, and also on the outside, it helps to give an overall uh, better aesthetic. So there's no ugly metal grate just sitting out there. Um, we like to have a nice clean look with as few doors and holes as possible. So um, that accomplishes a few things at the same time. Wonderful. All right. Last question. Is there any storage underneath all these seats? Everything's been rearranged. What's underneath here? There is limited storage. Um, behind these, you've got some drop storage there, obviously. You still have, you know, your headboard and whatnot. Um, on, the, on that side, um, things, you can really not store a whole lot because obviously underneath me on both sides is a wheel well. Um, we've got... But it, there is a little bit? There's a little bit underneath my side here. Okay. Yes. Um, but underneath the bathroom side, there would not be... Uh, the converter is over on that side, um, okay. and some some plumbing and wiring and ducting. So that's that side not this side yes, um, and then behind the seats as I mentioned, yeah. All right. Well, I know there's things, Scott, that we didn't talk about in here because we tried to just hit the overview. Uh, but I want to be sure everybody knows this is a prototype, right? So things could change a little bit. Um, you talked about some of those. Can you tell me when you expect this to be on the line? That's always a question that I get myself in trouble with. Okay. But uh, the goal right now is to get these online in January. So right now our production schedule is almost booked up through the end of the year on the Tab 320 line. But when we come back from the holidays, we'd like to make a transition and start building these immediately. Well, I would love that, but here's the question that you may not be able to answer just yet. Um, it's so hard for customers when they're shopping to tell what they're looking at. Is it the new style or the old style? Will you be billing these as a 2020, a 2021? Are you going to have two different kinds of 2020? Or you can plead the fifth and say you don't know yet. I do know, but the popular answer, or the answer may not be popular with everyone, but these will be 2021s. Um, as Joe mentioned in the very beginning of the video, uh, this has been a long time coming, and it's finally coming into fruition, and to delay it an extra few months just to sort of, you know, stay with what we've always done, um, you know, probably isn't in our best interest. So, you know, there's a lot of excitement behind this, and we want to just move forward at the right time and January seems to be the right time. So 2021 model. Well, I, I know that that will be maybe not popular with some folks, but with dealers and customers, I think you'll find a lot of support there because then they will know what they have and what they're looking at. And when they're shopping online, they'll need to know if it's a 20 or a 21 because there, there really is some significant differences in these campers. So um, new tab. Uh, you know, one of the things we talked about by putting this prototype out there is that people would be able to comment. So I think that's one of the things that we'll welcome. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Um, we're, people are always uh, glad to tell us what they don't like, but send us the good comments too. This is a very modern look. It is a departure from the standard tab, but I'll tell you folks, it feels so 
comfortable in here. We didn't talk about the white walls, the silver trim. I hope you can get a feel for what this is like. Let us know what you think and thank you, Scott, for your time. I know uh, this is not your favorite thing to do, but you are the expert here and I appreciate it. Hey, anytime. And, you know, we get better. You and I both get better by listening. So absolutely, please give us your feedback, positive and negative, and uh, we'll continue to improve every day. Sounds wonderful. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time.